Hello, this is Hamlet with Webicator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution that Peter Prince came up with for making AJAX calls with jQuery. Peter has agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article here on his blog at the URL shown on your screen. This tutorial assumes that you have basic knowledge in HTML, CSS, and some HTTP techniques. Now before we dig into the code, let's take a quick look at the final product and what it's going to look like. Here in my browser, I have the file that we're going to be looking at opened up. This is the final product. It's a very simple HTML page with a div here, a paragraph here, and then a button here that says update. And when we click on that button, what is going to be updated is this div here which has a small little grayish border. So let's do that. Also notice, by the way, before I click on it, that I have Firebug open. And so when I click on it, you'll notice a few things. First thing you'll notice is that the page was updated here. This is the div with no full page reload. That's the beauty of Ajax. And then you'll also notice in the console you can see that indeed the AJAX call was made to a server file. In this case, that server file is called AJAX.php. We, of course, could have named it whatever we wanted to. If I click on the button again, notice that the number here changed. It's a random number. And again, and so on. And you can see here that the different AJAX calls are being made every time I click on the update button. All right, so let's now start digging into the code. First and foremost, let me show you the uh, file structure. I put all my files for this tutorial in this solutions slash jQuery dash AJAX folder. And I simply have three files. I have the jQuery file itself. I have our index.html file. This is what we've been seeing in the browser. And then I have this ajax.php file. Now, let's open up the uh, index.html file. I'm going to open it up with a web editor. And this is the file that we were looking at in the browser. Let's quickly look at the markup first which is at the bottom of the file. Here's that box that was being updated when we were making the AJAX calls to the server. Notice that it has an ID of my box. So if we scroll back to the top, you can see here on lines seven through 10 that it gives some styles to that diff. It simply gives it a border with some width and height dimensions. So now back to the bottom, to the markup again, notice also that there's an update button. And this is the update button that we were seeing in the browser. It has an on click event handler. Therefore, when that button is clicked, it's going to call on a JavaScript function, which we're calling it my call. This is going to lead us to how jQuery is being used to make the AJAX call. So let's scroll up a bit to see the function declaration. And here it is starting on line 19. jQuery makes using the power of AJAX really easy with its own AJAX method. We're going to store the result from the AJAX call into this local variable, which we're calling request. Notice the different options for the AJAX call. First, URL which is simply a string containing the URL to which the request is being sent. In this case, ajax.php. Then we have the type. This is the type of request to make. It could, it could be post or get or put. The default and most common method is get, which is what's being used here in this tutorial. And then finally, we're using the data type which is the type of data that you're expecting back from the server. 
This could be HTML, as it is here in the tutorial, but it could also be XML, JSON, and other data types. Now, when the request is made to the server successfully, the AJAX call would be considered done. jQuery conveniently lets you handle what happens when the request is done successfully using the done method, as seen here on lines 26 to 28. The done method will return whatever data is returned back from the server. Again, in this instance, we're expecting back HTML data. On line 27, we can see that the done method simply gets the element with ID my box. We know that that div is the empty div on the markup, and then set the HTML of that div to whatever message is returned back from the server. Now, should the AJAX request to the server fail, we can handle that via the fail method. In this case, it simply alerts the user in a pop-up box that the request failed and shows the user the text status returned back from the call being made to the server. So, now that we know what the HTML looks like at the markup level and how jQuery is being used to make the AJAX call to the server, let's go ahead and see what the server file actually looks like. It's actually going to be very simple. Here it is, ajax.php. As you can see, ajax.php will simply echo out a paragraph with some static text and a dynamically generated random number. And now that is it for this video presentation. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again to Peter for letting us record this video on his jQuery AJAX call tutorial.